जय हिंद एवरी वन आई एम प्रभात कुमार एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू पी वाई क्यू अकेडमी इन टूडेज वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द साइंस क्वेश्चन ऑफ यू पी एस सी एन डी ए वन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू सो दिस वीडियो इज इन दिस वीडियो आई एम आई विल नॉट जस्ट बी डिक्टेटिंग द आंसर बट आई विल ऑल्सो बी प्रोवाइडिंग द डिटेल एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी क्वेश्चन एंड आई विल ऑल्सो बी शोइंग यू द शोर्स ऑथेंटिक शोर्स फ्रॉम Uh, from where the question has been picked this video is very much important for all those students who are going to give the nda 2022 the cds 2022 and the upcoming capf examination of 2022 which is scheduled on the august month okay so uh, uh, this video uh, so in this video uh, there will be 25 questions uh, because to, uh, it is difficult to cover all the 50 questions in one video because it will be lengthy so the st students may feel bored to uh, watch a video which is more than 50, uh, more than hour okay so uh, without wasting time let me start the discussion so the first question is what is the mass of a material whose specific heat capacity is 400 joule per kg uh, celsius for a rise in temperature from 50 degree celsius to 25 degree celsius when heat received is 20 kilo joule okay so it is a pure numerical question and uh, uh, if you just know a simple formula then you then it was a very easy question although the question is directly related to the concept uh, of uh, uh higher anxiety that means it is not given up to class 10 okay so uh let me tell you what is the solution here so it is the formula which is required here is q equals to m c del t okay so where q is the heat total heat okay m is the mass and c is the specific heat which is given okay and del t is the change in temperature okay we as you know that del is given for any change and t here temperature okay so let's uh, solve this question so for q the question uh, the total heat in the question is 20 kilo joule so let's convert it it into a joule so it will be nothing but 20000 joules okay so 20000 joules equals to a mass so uh, we have to find the mass then the given specific uh, heat is nothing but 400 joule and change in temperature so 25 minus 10 so it will be sorry 25 minus 15 so it will be 10 now let's find so m equals to 20000 divided by 400 into 10 so let's cut the zeros now we are left with 4 520 so here mass equals to 5 kg so you can see that how much easy it was uh, you would just uh, need to know this formula okay now let's move to second question the specific he latent heat of a vaporization of a substance is the quantity of heat needed to change unit mass from okay so this is a, a not a tough concept it is a very easy concept and it is given in the chapter of uh, Uh, it is given the first chapter of class nine. Okay, so first uh, let's uh, see specific uh, latent heat of vaporization. Okay, so vaporization that means we have to convert uh, uh, liquid into vapor. Okay, so that that is the first thing, liquid into gas or vapor. Okay, so let's uh, find the net option, liquid to vapor, liquid to vapor, vapor to liquid. Let's eliminate these two options, vapor to liquid. Now. we have to find with change of temperature or without change of temperature so uh, for latent heat we need a constant temperature that means we cannot change the temperature uh, means uh, that means um, the temperature doesn't changes okay you can see here uh, the uh, when a solid melts its temperature remains the same okay and uh, this uh, this is just due to the latent heat so the answer here will be option b okay this is given in the chapter first of class 9 you can go uh, you can read in detail okay next evaporation from the surface of a given liquid takes place more rapidly when okay so the 
question is again from the same chapter from which the previous question was taken uh, so you can see here i took the image uh, you must have observed that the rate of evaporation increases with uh, it increases with an increase in surface area and an increase in temperature that means you have to increase both temperature as well as surface area to increase the uh, evaporation it takes place more rapid when temperature is high and surface area of liquid is large so answer here is option a okay next uh, which of the following statements correctly explains the existence of a positive force between two electric charges okay so uh, this uh, this is question from uh, higher concept it is a question from uh, electrostatic chapter in which uh, let's say there are two charges okay and the charge is this and uh, this is q1 and this is q2 and both are separated from distance r so the force between these two charges can be given by or it is directly proportional to the product of q1 q2 divided by r square okay or in simple we can write at k q1 q2 by r square okay now uh, so uh, in which case the force will be positive then when the sign will be positive okay because charge can be negative and okay it can be negative as well as positive okay so now just focus on these two so if we take two positive charge then the whole will be positive okay and if you take two negative charge then also it will be a uh, positive force but if the charge is difference that means plus minus or minus plus then whole it will become as a minus so uh, if both are positive yes this can uh, this is true and both are negative this is true if both the charges oppos uh, are oppositely charged so in this case the total force will be a negative force which is not required so answer here should be option c okay next question an electric wire of resistance 50 ohm is cut into five equal wires these wires are then connected in parallel so what is the equivalent resistance of the of this combination okay so let's take a long wire okay so let's cut into different five pieces okay one two three four five okay so uh, now what uh, what will be the effect on the resistance okay so we know that r is given by r equals to rho l by a okay so earlier the length by l but now the length has decreased up to l by 5 so the resistance of the uh, small parts will also be one fifth of the earlier resistance okay that means the earlier resistance of the whole wire are 50 now so the new wire that means small wires will be one fifth of the earlier wire that means of 10 ohm okay now let's connect these small wires into parallel okay so when we will connect all these wires into parallel so we know the formula to find the equivalent resistance so it will be 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 and plus 1 by 10 taking 10 as LCM we will get 5 by 10 and 1 by 2 that means the equivalent resistance will be 2 ohm so our answer here is option A okay next question the electric field lines from an isolated positively charged conducting sphere are so again the question is from uh, higher NCRT that, that means you will get the answer in your uh, 11 sorry 12th chapter uh, so 12th class physics chapter okay so you can see here so it will be the field lines of a single positively charged are radially out wide outward while those of single negatively charged are radially inward so it is a positively charged so at right angles in the to the conducting surface and outward from the center of sphere so answer here is option B okay next which one of the following is not a solution so uh, this you can get the detail about different types of solution 
in the chapter 2 of class 9th NCRT. So you can see here a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances and various examples are lemonade, soda water are examples of solution. Okay. Other than that, but we can also have the solid solutions like alloys, gaseous solutions like air. That means uh, uh, alloy is a solution, air is a solution and we definitely know that sugar is also a solution. But milk is a colloid or we can say heterogeneous solution. So if it is a heterogeneous solution, then it will, uh, it will not a heterogeneous mixture, then it will not be a solution because solution is a homogeneous mixture. So answer here is option B. Okay. Next. Refining of petroleum is carried out using which one of the following techniques? So directly given in NCRT uh, in the chapter four, okay, of class 10. So you can see to separate a mixture of two or more miscible liquids from which the difference no no so it is given in the uh, i think uh, class 9 chapter 2 okay chapter 2 so you can find here the for examples for the separation of different gases from air different fractions from petroleum products so fractional distillation is used okay it is you can say fractional distillation so answer here is option b next question uh, which one of the following is a chemical change dissolving sugar in water first uh, uh, you need to differentiate what is a physical change and what is a chemical change so simply remember a change which cannot be reversed is a chemical change so uh, let's find the option which cannot be reversed so solution of sugar in water so it can be reversed so it is not a chemical change it is a physical change melting of ice it can be reversed okay crystallization it can also be reversed then mi milk turning sure no it cannot be reversed so answer is option d next which one of the following is correct molecular formula of ammonium carbonate if the valency of ammonium ions is plus one and carbonate anion is minus two so uh, here they made your task easy by giving the valency okay so but you need to know that ammonium is nh4 and carbonate is co3 so now let's cross the valency so you will get that nh4 whole to and co3 because the valency of co3 is 2 so answer here is option a next which one of the following is a covalent compound so there are two types of compound which is given in the NCRT up to class 10. One is covalent and another is ionic. And uh, in covalent compound, uh, the uh, uh, the sharing of uh, at uh, the sharing the sharing of electrons takes place, and in ionic compound, the transfer of electron takes place. And uh, in general, the transfer uh, is done. In the uh, in the metals because they they have uh, extra uh, extra electrons in their valence cell okay so uh, and in those compound uh, or in those uh, elements which which uh, doesn't have uh, the adequate number of uh, electrons that they can share or they can receive that means uh, in case of carbon because carbon has four so it uh, neither it can share neither it can donate for nor it can receive for so in that case it forms covalent bond in which it share the four electrons with the other so uh, simply you need to find here uh, which compound is having carbon so answer here is option c silicon carbide next the mass number of argon is 40 which one of the following statement is correct so mass number is nothing but mass number equals to neutron plus proton okay and neutron proton can also be equals to electron okay and proton is nothing but the atomic number okay now the number of protons in argon is 22 no the, the atomic number of argon is 18 so it should be 18 okay so this is wrong the number of neutrons in argon is 18 no so if the mass number is 40 okay so let's subtract so it should be 
3 minus 2 so neutrons should be 22 so this is also wrong the number of electron in argon is 18 yes this is correct because the number of electron is equals to number of proton which is 18 so answer is option c next which one of the following is the correct order of the valencies of element okay so let's write the valency so valency of neon is 0 then valency of silicon is 4 then valency of nitrogen is 3 and valency of magnesium is 2 so we can write 0 2 3 4 so first will be neon okay then will be magnesium okay then nitrogen is in con so answer here is option a next the frequency of an alternating current is 3 hertz it implies that so first we have to know that there are how many cycles in 1 hertz so in NCRT you will find in the sound chapter of class 9 that 1 hertz is equals to 1 cycle so in 3 hertz there will be 3 cycles per second so answer is option B next which one of the following correctly represents the SI unit of resistivity okay suppose you don't know but you remember this formula that R equals to rho L by A okay and okay so rho here is nothing but resistivity so to find rho we can write that R A by L now R is the resistance so its unit is ohm A is area so its unit is meter square and L is meter so now we can write ohm meter so the unit of resistivity will be nothing but ohm meter so answer is option D next what is the current required to light a 60 watt incandescent light bulb in a domestic supply of 240 volt okay so we have to find the current so power here is 60 watt and uh, volt given is 220 volt we know, so we know the formula power equals to vi so let's put it 60 equals to 240 into i so i here is nothing but 60 by 240 okay so 1 by 4 equals to 0.25 ampere so our answer is option b let's move the magnetic field produced by a current carrying straight wire at a point outside the wire depends on so uh, this is also concept from higher ncrt so it depends inversely on the distance from it okay so uh, currently i don't have any image here okay uh, so answer here is option a but you will get the reference in ncrt because it is uh, it has asked a very easy question for all those who are in class who have read ncrt or who have read physics okay uh, what is the dimension of gravitation i'm not going detail because uh, uh, the NDA students are also from arts background so they will not they will not be able to understand okay otherwise if you are from science you must know that this is a very easy question okay next what is the dimension of gravitational constant okay so uh, let's solve it okay so for that we need to remember some formula so we know the formula of gravitational force which is given by z m1 m2 by r square okay where z is the gravitational constant so let find z so z will be nothing but f r square by m1 m2 okay now force is nothing but mass into acceleration okay mass into acceleration into r square by m1 m2 okay so let's cut 1 m okay so it will left with 1 m okay then acceleration so acceleration is nothing but meter per second square okay meter meter so second square will be x then it is radius sorry r square so it will be meter square okay r will be no r will be length so this will be l square okay okay so, so 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 meter meter will also be length okay yes meter will also be length so leave it uh, wait so uh, it is nothing but meter per second okay 
then it is it is meter square then here it will be mass now let's start writing it so it will be m minus 1 mass then l so 1 l 2 3 3 l okay meter per second square and t minus 2 so we are we got our answer m minus 1 l 3 t minus 2 so m minus 1 l 3 t minus 2 answer is option b next a ball is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 40 meter per second the time taken by the ball to reach the maximum height would be approximately okay so let's take this is a ground and a ball is thrown and it will reach some maximum height and it will come back okay so it is thrown with the initial velocity of 40 meter per second okay and we know that till it will uh, attain a maximum height so final velocity will become zero at this point at the maximum height okay let's take this height as h okay so now uh, to solve these kind of problems we use three equations okay so v equals to uh, u plus gt okay then v square minus u square equals to 2gh then uh, s or, or let's say h equals to ut plus half gt square okay so we have to time we have to find the time here so we can take this equation okay so so v here will be zero okay zero and u v uh, u is 40 meter per second minus plus so g here will be minus 10 because the ball is thrown upward which is against the gravity and let's say t is okay which is minus 40 equals to minus 10 t so t equals to 4 second very simple question okay so answer here is option c next the time period of a uh, of a uh, one meter long pendulum pendulum approximates to so yes again a easy question so let's take it as a pendulum okay so it will take one second to reach here another second okay no uh, yes yes so to complete a one total uh, to come back it will take one second one second total two seconds okay so answer here is option c so that means uh, for whole it will be one second and come back it will be one second that will be a time period okay next which one of the following statement about living and non-living being is are correct okay while living being can demonstrate growth and repair non-living being cannot this is true then while living being demonstrate metabolic processes non-living being does not this is also true so answer is option c okay uh, this uh, for uh, i do i didn't took any reference because it seems that it is totally correct okay then which of the following plant plastics stores st starch oil protein granules okay so in the chapter cell of class 9 so in plastids paragraph you can find in the last line that leucoplasts are primarily organelles in which materials such as starch oil and protein granules are stored so answer here is option b leucoplasts next which are the following statements about vacuoles so again a question taken from the same chapter in fact the, from the same page okay uh, in plant there is a large central vacuole that may occupy 90% of the cell volume exactly taken uh, statement the central volume of some plant cells may occupy up to 50 to 90% so this is exactly true in plant cell vacuoles provide turgidity and rigidity again you can see in plant vacuoles are full of cell sap to provide turgidity and rigidity exactly correct in amoeba vacuole have role in nutrition this is also true you can see here then vacuoles are absent in animal cells no vacuoles are not absent but vacuoles are of small size in animal cells okay then plant cells so this is the incorrect and uh, statement so our answer is option d next in aquatic plant large air sacs give them buoyancy effects these sacs are surrounded by which one of the following types of tissues okay so uh, they are surrounded by a permanent tissue known as parenchyma okay 
so you can see here in aquatic plants large cavities are present in parenchyma to help them float such parenchyma type is called arenchyma so sometimes they ask about arenchyma but this time they are not asking about arenchyma they are simply asking about parenchyma the main permanent tissue so answer here is option a next which of the following belongs to pisces so very confusing option but if you are gone through ncrt you can see in the image that uh, the dog fish which whose common name is dogfish but the main name is scolidon on and which belongs to pisces pisces are the true fish so answer here is option a okay otherwise jellyfish silverfish and starfish they are not pisces okay and other than that mandarin fish is a pisces it comes under pisces angler fish and lion fish they also comes under pisces so remember all this they can be asked in the upcoming examination okay so uh, let me end uh, today's lecture here because uh, it will take a lot of time if i will i uh, have if i will reach up to 100 okay and uh, you can get the solution from 76 to 100 in the next part and uh, i would request that all those aspirants who are preparing for the cds capf nda it is a very important video for them and uh, uh, so please don't miss the upcoming video and uh, if you like this video so please like it and share it to all your friends who are preparing for all these examinations and uh, if you want another uh, other videos other uh, with, with, of PYQ you can go in the play uh, go and watch the playlist you will get some useful videos of the previous year questions with the uh, explanation and the uh, source from where the question has been picked so you can see here there are some authentic sources so the most authentic source here is the class 9 and 10 in CIT okay for all whether it is CAPF or CDS or ND okay all those some questions in ND and CAPF are asked from higher NCRT but more than 90 percent question or at least 80 to 85 percent percent questions are being asked from uh, these two books only so it is uh, better to first revise all the chapters of this book and then uh, if you are a science student then you can move up to the some few chapters of class 12 also okay so thank you so much for watching pyq academy and uh, i will be uploading the next part uh, next day so please stay tuned with pyq academy thank you so much